In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, Almighty God, and to my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most greatest fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary and her virtue, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O 
O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that, being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. You yourselves shall be named priests of the Lord, ministers of our God you shall be called. I will give them their recompense faithfully, a lasting covenant I will make with them. Their descendants shall be renowned among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them as a race the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Please remain standing for a blessing from the bishop. My dear friends in Christ, thank you for coming to participate in this celebration of Holy Mass and to give our Lord and our God the highest form of worship and praise that we can give. For it is here we participate indeed in the heavenly worship. My dear brothers and sisters, I invite you to ponder a question for, for just a moment. What is the greatest problem and challenge that we face in the Diocese of Marquette that is at the same time our greatest opportunity? What is our greatest problem and challenge that is, at the same time, our greatest opportunity? My brothers and sisters, it, it seems to me that the biggest problem we have, our, our greatest challenge, is a shortage of Catholics. Yet at the same time, this is for us our greatest opportunity. For in the opening prayer at Mass today, we, we prayed that as we have a share in Christ's consecration, so may we also proclaim the good news of his redemption. You see, by our baptism and confirmation, we have become this nation, this kingdom of priests, as was mentioned in the entrance antiphon today. The Lord has made us this through the sacraments of baptism and confirmation. He has anointed us with the Holy Spirit. And he sends us forth to proclaim this good news of Jesus. In our gospel reading, as the Holy Spirit comes upon the Lord, he says, you know, the, he has been anointed, the Lord has anointed him to bring glad tidings to the poor. And we have so much poverty in the Upper Peninsula, and not only material poverty, but the greatest poverty is not knowing and believing in Jesus Christ.
And he invites each and every one of us to proclaim this good news, this good news to the poor, that they may know the saving love of Jesus Christ, that they may believe in him, that they may follow him in faith. And let us reflect for a moment on the origin of this mission that we receive from the Lord, because it comes from the very inner life of the Trinity himself, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So let's enter into the Trinity, and I'd like to tell a bit of an anecdote to to help enter into this mystery. just a few days ago, as I was you know, preparing breakfast, I was making some oatmeal. And I wasn't perhaps quite as attentive as I should be, and it started boiling over. It made a mess. And you know, for me, this always happens when I'm in a hurry. <laughs> but just kind of imagine, you know, something pouring out of the pot and over the stove, and. Maybe boiling over isn't all that bad after all when we think about it. And when we think that something is full, we might think that means that the container is filled to its capacity. But the biblical notion of fullness is one that's overflowing, that's spilling over something that just can't be contained in a little container. And think about, you know, the, 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 the divine persons of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and the flame and the fire of that love that just can't be contained. It just boils over. The Father completely spills himself out into the Son, and the Son completely spills himself out into the Father. And you see, my brothers and sisters, when we're baptized and and, and we're confirmed, we are given this gift of the Holy Spirit. And this gift of the Spirit is not a puny portion. He fills us with this spirit, this fire of his love that is meant to bubble over, to overflow, not to merely just be contained in us, but to spread and to spread and to spread and to spread. If we've really received the Lord, if we've really been filled with him, we cannot contain it. And my dear friends, we just have to let it boil over. Throughout the Upper Peninsula, So that God's love may enter deeply into the hearts of all people, that they may come to know him, that they know Jesus. Not merely facts about him, but they know him, that he's alive, and he's present in their life. And they believe in him. The shortage of Catholics that we have is such a great opportunity for us to let our hearts boil over with this fire of God's love and not contain it.
But I think sometimes the problem is we're just a little bit uncomfortable talking about our faith in Jesus. Maybe we're not really sure what to say. And sometimes these opportunities to give witness to the Lord, to give witness to his redemption, is like putting a lid on that pot to try and keep it in. And not let the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ spread. And let me give you a a simple example of what this looks like. Uh, There's uh, a couple in in one of our parishes here in the diocese that uh, it was in the hospital for a procedure and they ended up talking to someone who worked at the hospital. This is just a a wonderful faith-filled couple and you know, religious topics come up in conversation with this young man. He was at a time when he was looking for something in his life. And then he starts coming to church with him, with them. He's now going to be entering the church in about a week and a half. And He told his mother about it. And so now his mother is also going to be entering the church in about a week and a half. It's pretty simple. It's just giving witness to Jesus. Not putting a lid on the pot. Letting it boil over. and let it spread. Now, to help us do this, we're we're focusing on one thing in the Diocese of Marquette, and that's the formation of the lay faithful for mission. (laughs) Yours being sent out. Priests are here to form you, the deacons are here to form you, I'm here to form you. And we're sending you out on mission that the Lord has given you from your baptism and your confirmation. Now, the point person for this, if you've been following announcements now, is going to be Father, Father Ryan Ford, and he's going to be kind of concentrating on this in two fundamental ways. One is to work with one parish at a, t- a few parishes at a time in a more concentrated way with you know, the, the key people in the parish. And these are like you folks. Now, this is parish staff, and and these are the lay faithful, the ones who show up to everything. Just so we can become more comfortable in sharing our faith with the Lord Jesus and and, and follow him ourselves much more closely. And then a, a second part of that emphasis is just offering a process of formation uh, to, to how to spread the gospel just for anyone who's interested. This is something we're all doing together, my brothers and sisters. The shortage of Catholics is our greatest problem and challenge, but it's also our greatest opportunity. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to come. The sacred chrism is one of the oils that I will consecrate shortly. And this is the oil that is with which people are anointed when they're baptized, when they're confirmed. It's the oil with which priests are anointed when they're ordained. And it signifies the coming of the Holy Spirit. And to help us realize this, there's a perfume that I pour into the oil, a sweet-smelling perfume to give us that fragrance, that beautiful fragrance of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. 
And before I consecrate it, I'll breathe into it again to symbolize his coming of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes, he doesn't give us a puny portion. When I'm consecrating this chrism, pray that the Holy Spirit comes upon you and upon all of the, the people in the Upper Peninsula. Let us pray through these sacraments. We may be renewed in our own commitment to follow the Lord Jesus. Or just like the Lord, we share in his anointing. The Spirit of God has anointed us to bring glad tidings to the poor. To all of those who are suffering from great poverty, from their lack of faith in Jesus. And my brother priests, you are soon to renew the promises of your own ordination. As you renew these promises, ask the Holy Spirit to come upon you anew. that he may anoint your preaching with the fire of his love. That your proclamation of the gospel may be filled with the Holy Spirit, the spirit that enters hearts and changes them and brings them to faith. Pray that that Holy Spirit upon, comes upon all of us, that we indeed be faithful witnesses of our Lord Jesus Christ. My beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about the sacred duties towards Christ's church, which prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination? Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites, and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the head and shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls? As for you, dearest sons and daughters, pray for your priests, that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ the High Priest, so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. Christ. 
And pray also for me that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness, and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher and servant of all. May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us shepherds and flock to eternal life. With gratitude to Almighty God for the abundant blessings he has poured out upon us, let us turn to him now with confidence and trust as we present our needs and the needs of our brothers and sisters. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that the Lord grant him wisdom and strength to carry on his ministry to the universal church and for his prayer intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord for Bishop John Durfler and all the priests and deacons in the Diocese of Marquette, that the Lord continue to make them good shepherds and servants of the gospel after the likeness of Christ himself. We pray to the Lord. Lord for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, the permanent diaconate, and religious life in the Diocese of Marquette, and a strengthening of the vocation of marriage, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially the sick, those who minister to them, those struck by natural disasters, and those that were abused by ministers of the church, that the Lord give them consolation and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For the elect and those preparing for reception into full communion with the Catholic Church, that they will experience the love and support of the Church as they make their final preparations for the Easter mysteries. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For all whose lives are threatened by war, terrorism, violence, and hatred, for the safety and protection of all our servicemen and women, and for a true and lasting peace in our world, especially in the Ukraine, Russia, Israel, and Gaza, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For all of us, that we are strengthened to show the faith of Christ, face of Christ to our neighbors as we work to promote the new evangelization. We pray to the Lord. Lord for safe travel home for all of us today. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all our beloved dead who have gone before us marked by the sign of faith, that the Lord grant them eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord Lord our God, you are our refuge and our strength, the source of all goodness and of every blessing under heaven. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need, and in your great mercy answer the prayers of these, your sons and daughters. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord.
Reverend Father, we bring this oil from the fruit of the olive tree and ask that after mixing it with sweet perfume, you consecrate it for the sealing of the baptized in the sacrament of confirmation, for anointing the hands of the priests and the head of the bishop in holy orders, and to anoint the altar and the walls of the house of the church in the rite of dedication. Those among us who baptize infants, prepare the elect and the young men and women of our parishes for confirmation, who work with candidates for ordination, and those of us who prepare to dedicate new places of worship, ask this blessing. The oil of the sick. Most reverent Father, we bring this oil and ask that it be blessed for the anointing of those who suffer from serious illness, those who are facing surgery, and those who suffer from the burdens of old age. We who are sick and those among us who minister to the sick and elderly throughout the Church of Marquette ask this blessing. The oil of catechumens. Most Reverend Father, we bring this oil for catechumens and ask that it be blessed 
for the anointing of all infants, children, and adults who are called to prepare for baptism. Those among us who prepare parents for the baptism of their children and who sponsor, teach, and pray with catechumens and the elect ask this blessing. O oh God, Father of all consolation, who willed to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son, listen favorably to the prayer of faith. Send forth from the heavens, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the paraclete, upon this oil in all its richness which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body, so that by your holy blessing, everyone anointed with this oil as a safeguard for body, soul, and spirit may be freed from all pain, all infirmity, and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for our sake, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. O oh God, strength and protection of your people, who have made the oil you created a sign of strength, graciously bless this oil and grant courage to the catechumens who will be anointed with it, so that receiving divine wisdom and power, they may understand more deeply the gospel of your Christ, they may undertake with a generous heart the labors of the Christian life, and made worthy of adoption as your sons and daughters, they may rejoice to be born anew and to live in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, to God the Almighty Father, that he bless and sanctify this oil, so that all who are outwardly anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. O God, author of all growth and spiritual progress, receive in your goodness the grateful homage that the Church joyfully offers to you through our voice. For in the beginning you commanded the earth to bring forth fruit-bearing trees, among which olive trees would arise as providers of this most rich oil so that their fruit might serve for sacred chrism. In the spirit of prophecy, David foresaw the sacraments of your grace and sang of the oil that would gladden our faces. After the world's offenses were washed away by the flood, a dove announced the restoration of peace on earth with the olive branch, foreshadowing the gift to come. In the last days, all of this has been clearly revealed. When every offense is removed through the waters of baptism, the anointing with this oil causes our faces to be joyful and serene. You commanded your servant Moses to make his brother Aaron a priest, by pouring this oil upon him after he had been washed in water. Still greater dignity was added when your son, Jesus Christ our Lord, insisted that he be washed by John in the waters of the Jordan. You sent the Holy Spirit from on high in the likeness of a dove. You declared by the witness of the voice that followed that you were well pleased in him, your only begotten Son. And you were seen to confirm clearly what the prophet David had foretold in song, that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness above his companions. Therefore, we beseech you, Lord, be pleased to sanctify with your blessing this oil in its richness and to pour into it the strength of the Holy Spirit with the powerful working of your Christ. From this holy name it has received the name of chrism, and with it you have anointed your priests, prophets, kings, and martyrs. May you confirm the chrism you have created as a sacred sign of perfect salvation and life for those to be made new in the spiritual waters of baptism. May those formed into a temple of your majesty by the holiness infused through this anointing and by the cleansing of the stain of their first birth be made fragrant with the innocence of a life pleasing to you. May those anointed with royal, priestly, and prophetic dignity be clothed with the garment of an incorruptible gift in keeping with the sacrament you have established. May this oil be the chrism of salvation for those born again of water and the Holy Spirit and may it make them partakers of eternal life 
and sharers of heavenly glory, through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. <coughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, high priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of your praise, for 
for they themselves offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in the hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living in you. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended through your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he sent the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, 
and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Let us pray. We beseech you, Almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 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 My brothers and sisters, this Mass which the bishop can celebrates with his College of Presbyters and in which he consecrates the Holy Chrism and blesses the other oils, witnesses to the communion of the priests with their bishop. This union of bishop and priest is present in every liturgical celebration because the priests share in the sacred office of the bishop in building up, sanctifying, and ruling the people of God. The newly baptized are anointed and confirmed with the chrism consecrated by the bishop, and so are given a share in the royal and prophetic priestly office of Christ. Catechumens are prepared and disposed for baptism with the oil of catechumens, by which they are strengthened in the battle against sin. The sick are anointed in their illness and infirmity with the oil of the sick, as a means for healing of body and soul. I am pleased to invite you who are here sent by your cluster parish or institution to secure the oils for this coming year, to come forward and receive them from your very reverend vicar for rain. As you return home, care for these oils with reverence. Give them a place of honor in your parish church and in the Mass of the Lord's Supper on Holy Thursday. The very Reverend Alan Cannon Mott, Vicar Forain of the Holy Name of Mary, Vicariate. The mission of Holy Family Barbo, St. Kateri Tekawitha, Bain Mills, and St. Isaac Jogues, Sault Ste. Marie. St. Francis Xavier Parish, Brimley, St. Joseph Parish, Rudyard, and the mission of St. Mary Trout Lake. Sacred Heart Parish, Detour, St. Stanislaus Koska Parish, Gatesville, the mission of St. Florence, Drummond Island, and Our Lady of the Snows, Hessel. St. Ignatius Loyola Parish, St. Ignis, Immaculate Conception Parish, Moran, and St. Anne Parish, Mackinac Island. St. Gregory Parish, Newberry, St. Stephen, Nobinway, St. Timothy, Curtis, and the Mission of Our Lady of Victory, Paradise. Companions of Christ the Lamb, Paradise. Holy Name of Mary Parish, Sault Ste. Marie. And the Mission of Sacred Heart, Sugar Island. St. Joseph Parish, Sault Ste. Marie. the very Reverend Corey Litzner, Vicar Forain of the Most Holy Name of Jesus, Vicariate.
Our Lady of Peace Parish, Amik, Sacred Heart Parish, Calumet, St. Paul the Apostle Parish, Calumet, and the Mission of Our Lady of Pines, Copper Harbor, Holy Redeemer, Eagle Harbor. The Most Holy Name of Jesus, St. Kateri Tekakwita Parish, Asinans, St. Anne Parish, Baraga, and Sacred Heart Parish, Lawns. St. Albert the Great Parish, Houghton, and St. Anne Parish, Chassel. Church of the Resurrection, Hancock, in the mission of St. Francis of Assisi, Dollar Bay. St. Ignatius Loyola Parish, Houghton, and Holy Family Parish, South Range. In St. Joseph Parish, Lake Linden. The Very Reverend Benjamin Rivard, representative for the St. John Newman Vicariate. St. John Neumann Parish, Hermansville Spalding, and St. Bruno Parish, Nato. Holy Redeemer Parish, Menominee Birch Creek, Holy Spirit Parish, Menominee, Resurrection Parish, Menominee, and Precious Blood Parish, Stevenson. The Very Reverend Brian Gerber, Vicar for Rain of the St. Mary Rockland Vicariate. St. Sebastian Parish, Bessemer, Immaculate Conception Parish, Wakefield, and the Missions of St. Catherine Marinesco. Our Lady of Peace Parish, Ironwood. Holy Family Parish, Ontonagon. St. Mary Parish, Rockland. St. Jude Parish, White Pine. Sacred Heart Parish, Ewan. And the Mission of St. Anne, Berglund. The Very Reverend Timothy Cannon Ferguson. Vicar Ferrain of the St. Joseph and St. Patrick Vicariate. St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Parish, Bark River, and the Mission of St. Joseph, Foster City. St. Anne Parish, Escanaba. St. Joseph and St. Patrick Parish, Escanaba, St. Thomas the Apostle Parish, Escanaba, St. Anthony of Padua Parish, Wells, and St. Francis Hospital, Escanaba. The Bishop Noah Home, Escanaba. Holy Family Parish, Flat Rock. All Saints Parish, Gladstone, and the Garden Area Parishes, St. John the Baptist, Garden, St. Mary Magdalene, Cooks, and St. Andrew, Nema. St. Francis de Sales Parish, Manistique, in the Mission of Divine Infant of Prague, Gulliver. 
St. Joseph Parish Perkins, St. Charles Borromeo Parish Rapid River, and St. Rita Parish Ternary. The very Reverend Janice Romanic, Vicar Forain of the St. Mary Norway Vicariate. St. Cecilia Parish Caspian, Immaculate Conception Parish Waters Meet, and St. Agnes Parish Iron River, St. Rose Parish Channing, Guardian Angel Parish Christophals, Immaculate Conception Parish Iron Mountain, St. Mary and St. Joseph Parish Iron Mountain, Carmelite Monastery of the Holy Cross, Iron Mountain, American Martyrs Parish, Kingsford, St. Mary Queen of Peace Parish, Kingsford, St. Mary Parish, Norway, and St. Barbara Parish, Falcon. The Very Reverend Michael Stieber, Vicar Forain of the St. Peter Cathedral Vicariate. Sacred Heart Parish Champion and St. Augustine Parish Republic. St. Anthony Parish Gwyn and the Mission of St. Joseph Northland. St. John the Evangelist Parish, Ishwaming, and St. Joseph Parish, Ishwaming. St. Louis the King Parish, Marquette, St. Michael Parish, Marquette, and St. Christopher Parish, Marquette, St. Peter Cathedral Parish, Marquette, and the Mission of St. Mary Big Bay. Sacred Heart Parish, Munising, and the Mission of St. Therese au Train. Holy Rosary in Grand Marais, and St. Paul Parish Nagani in the mission of Our Lady of Perpetual Help Palmer. Before we conclude, I'd like to offer a few words of thanks to all of those who helped prepare for this beautiful liturgy. Thanks for your time, your talent, your efforts to help us all pray and, and worship the Lord. Uh, I also want to give some special recognition to the priests this day. Normally this Mass uh, in, a, in diocese that may not be quite as large geographically takes place on Holy Thursday in the morning, which is the day of the institution of the priesthood. And so that is why they renew their promises uh, at this Mass. And we have a particularly fine group of priests in this diocese. Thank you, priests.
And then finally, at uh, the end of this Mass, we have a reception down in the parish hall. Please come and join in with some great food and fellowship. The Lord be with you. And with you. Bow down for the blessing. Be near to those who call on you, O Lord, and graciously grant your protection to all who place their hope in your mercy, that they may remain faithful in holiness of life, and having enough for their needs in this world, they may be full heirs of your promise for eternity. Through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. <laughs>